The first day my mind is like a jumping bean on a hot pan. What I'm going to do, what I'm going to see, what I, what I. In a few days I settle down into a routine, get up hours before sunrise, walk and photograph until dark. In a week I am lonely, I wish I had someone to talk with. In two weeks I talk with myself. In three weeks I see things differently. I don't see myself as a photographer. I see myself as someone who likes to look at things and really understand, you know, to really learn to read the landscape and what's out there. And I think the final phase of being in a landscape is really when you're very, very attentive to what's there. There is something about time spent in a place that changes what you're seeing. When I first am there, I'm going to make the most cliched photographs. They're really standard ways of seeing a landscape that we share. But that if I spend a lot of time, those things get really boring. They're not interesting. And that the more I look, the more what is there becomes sort of magical. It can never happen, or it can take weeks, or it can take visiting a place again and again and again and again and again and again and again. And then all of a sudden, you develop a relationship. And I think there is a reason. I just quickly found that that really I, my it wasn't the science that interested me. It was really going out in the world and looking at stuff. And I kind of had this idea, well, maybe if I'm a photographer, I can sort of do that. And, and I just started making pictures from there and figuring it out. By being a photographer, it makes me legitimate in our culture. So I can do this very odd thing of going out for long periods of time and call it work. There's something up there in the Gila that's really incredible. The Gila had, has the remnants of the great Ponderosa forests of the Southwest. There was something in those remnant grasslands I've seen 30 years ago that's gone. And it is the end of something. I'm, I'm only, I, I'd say I'm only beginning to see it. I don't think there's a place on the planet where if you're actually... Um, have a deep knowledge of what you're looking at where you won't see the fundamental thing is a mark made by humans. You have to use great intent not to make a picture that has a really obvious human marking. I know one of the things was people often get on Ansel Adams for creating this illusion of the pristine, which is, I, I think, a, a, a gross misreading of his work. But he was very aware that if you put one thing in a picture that human beings have made, they will think the picture's about that. What we're really looking for is an affirmation of our own ideas. And really those ideas come through the stories we tell each other. And the greatest story that humans have always told is that I emerged from this landscape or I came to this landscape. It was given to me by God and it's there for me to use. But I really think there's something we've missed, and really one of the things that, that is very innate to what made the human species, and that was that we're actually a species that's able to take an ecosystem apart. And my hope is that maybe I'm an old voice that says there's something really important in the complexity of that world, and then maybe a new voice that says, we still breathe this air, we still breathe this water, we still eat these plants.